Scam. Just hook, line, and sinker. Schnookered like a rookie, shot like a fish in a barrel. Or at least that's what I'd like to say. But in reality, the account that I got scammed by was not an obvious art shilling VFX bot account. It's scary how it's getting harder and harder to tell the difference between what's a real artist and what's a bot set up by a shady company overseas to send a message anytime it scrapes the word commission on a tweet. It's scary how many unsuspecting and well-intentioned buyers wind up falling victim to even the more obvious accounts just because they don't know what to look for. And it's scary seeing the lengths the scummy people behind these art theft and scamming rings will go to just to keep whatever money they've conned out of you or to try and get you to send more money their way. Whether it's posting about a fake emergency or bill that needs paying, or whether it's talking bad about the art that you currently have to try and somehow shame you into paying them, it's just not right. And today, I want to shine a little bit more light on what goes on with these accounts. Hey, hi, yo, yeah, out there to all my big brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, and of course, mommies, daddies, siblings, and guardians. It's me, your bite sized baddie and favorite little brother, Mark. My first introduction to bot accounts like these was back on Tumblr with the blogs promoting lascivious ladies wanting your company on a website that will certainly not infect your PC with malware if you click that link. But more and more recently, I've been getting suspicious messages asking to commission me or buy the rights to my artwork, or trying to get me to follow links on ArtStation and even DeviantArt. It's a plague. An entire epidemic of scam accounts and bots flooding the world wide web. At this point, I think we all know those Twitter scammers. If you don't, I'm talking about the ones that will flock to any post saying things like me, me, or I would love to do this for you when you make a post even tangentially related to paying money for art. Even if it's just a post about you being proud of your VTuber models, or if it's just a post of you saying, I wish someone would commission me to draw XYZ so I can get better at drawing it. Their accounts usually have obviously traced work, free assets from the Adobe shop, and the most rudimentary DaVinci Resolve editing on their page that would make any editing 102 professor instantly become the Windows Movie Maker particle disintegrate effect. And yet, person after person falls for these obviously lugubrious accounts. Honestly, I never thought I would be one of those foolish schlubs who fell for it. But how the turntables, like a boomer who knows not of email, or perhaps a 10-year-old in Sephora who has only ever used a cell phone and iPad, I was taken advantage of online. Not only did the person I paid for art try to scam me, but they tried to do it in one of the most brazen and egregious ways I have ever seen in my entire life. I want to do my best to keep you guys from falling victim like me and being stuck in PayPal refund purgatory. But to do that, I need to explain the whys and hows of what really brought us here. You know that I'm an artist and an avid consumer and producer of OC insert and self-shipping content. But I'm also like... <laughs> busy with doing content creation? I can't always make my own assets, and it's actually off the wall to think that any content creator sustainably can do all of their own recording, mixing, editing, illustrating, and any other things they may need without burning out. Believe me, I tried to do it all, and it left me feeling like scrambled egg. Zero out of ten, do not recommend. With that in mind, picture me. A man who very much likes other men, when I first saw Overwatch's new character, Malga. Big, strong, adorable, and with some of the most kissable lips I've seen on a video game character in so long. I want to know that man biblically, but also, I didn't have time in December to create the artwork I wanted to of me and my newest husband. A travesty, assuredly. As a purveyor of the arts, well, of course that means I've gotta commission someone else to participate in my self-shipping cringe. Or at least I tried to. I'll admit here that when I made my tweet asking for commission prices, I was a little wine drunk. But 
I was also expecting and accustomed to a certain kind of scam bot. I figured it wouldn't be that hard to weed out the way from the chaff, so to speak. I mean, I've been drawing it for the past 10 years at least, so determining what's traced or looks off shouldn't be too hard. I've called out a few of these accounts in the past for straight up stealing art from other sites and claiming it as their own. So when this specific account messaged me, I did my usual checks on their page. I saw art that wasn't made by AI, but didn't look traced either. I saw that they actually spoke to other people about non-commission related things in the replies, and most importantly, they actually had a portfolio site. The most obvious scammers don't usually have those and often send a flood of images to your inbox without asking. But on her link tree, which is another uncommon thing for art scam bots, this girl had not only an art station with content on it, but she had a Twitch that seemed, though small, active, as well as links to a number of other social media presences like Instagram, Discord, and even Tumblr. I didn't look at all of them, which I'll explain why that was a mistake later, but having that many coupled with the art station having a consistent portfolio of what looked like original work made me think, oh, this girl is probably a real person. Today, I'm fairly sure she took those artworks from somewhere else or made those pictures just so that she could fool people into thinking they would actually be getting art by commissioning her. But I digress. I replied to her message to ask what her prices were and if she had a commission sheet to go along with her portfolio. She in turn asked what my price range was and I gave it to her along with explaining specifically that I wanted a picture of my Overwatch character Dino Mighty sitting on Malga's shoulder and even showed her a quick stick figure reference for what I wanted. She said what she could do for that within my price range and sent me a money request. Pretty normal fare for a commission and like... <laughs> Okay, maybe it was the wine drunk Mark brain, but our conversation seemed relaxed and fairly normal. No real red flags. This money request came from not an individual like I would have expected, however. Instead, it was from a business called Pixel Provision. That did raise red flags, but I figured who knows? Maybe she was just trying to make an actual business out of her artwork. And also, but I'd had a few glasses of wine, so my rationale was not the best. Never drink in commission, lads. It almost never turns out well. It cut me some slack, though. My mind was caught squarely betwixt Malga's titties and some apothic crush, okay? So, with the money sent, specifically as a goods and services transaction, because it is tax evasion to ask for jobs to be paid through friends and family, and also gives you zero buyer protection, I waited and waited for about a week and a half with zero word from her or real activity on the account. So on December 14th, I messaged her asking for an update. She replied that she was just about to start it and that was the last thing I heard from her. Please note that I started this commissioning process on December 3rd and I waited until January 6th to ask for any sort of update after she claimed to be working on it. So it's not like I was pestering her. I wanted to give her some extra time during the holidays because I know my commissions slow down around then. I also understand that commissions can have long lead times. Hell, my own commissions usually take a few weeks to finish. But if you ghost me without any reply back, I will have no other choice but to assume you're trying to cut and run with the PayPal 60 to 90 day refund reporting limit. Still though, even when by Christmas, I suspected this user was probably just an advanced version of one of those VFX bots, I still tried to give her time. At first, I figured, hey, if it's a scam, I'll just know better next time and I'll get some absolutely ass quality art out of it. At least I can make content on YouTube about it. But now I'm here, reaping what I've sown with a worse scenario than I ever could have imagined. To fuck around is human, but to find out, <sighs> it is divine. I sent DM after DM and got zilch. Two weeks 
weeks into January and nothing. I even said, hey, if you don't message me back, I can only assume you're scamming me and we'll take it up with PayPal. But still nothing. I can only assume she muted our conversation so that she could just forget I existed until it was too late for me to get a refund. Too bad I'm a little cagey when it comes to my money and actually kept my word about making a report. Listen, I know $80 isn't the most money in the world, but it's nothing to sneeze at either. That's more than I make per month on Patreon and Twitch combined. That's more than I make on most of my own art commission work. And I'd much rather spend it on someone who actually makes art than just having it be out in the ether. Speaking of spending money on someone who actually makes the art they promised to sell, let me shout out today's sponsor, me. I'm on VGen now. It's a very exclusive site for VTubers and artists of VTubers to buy and sell their artworks. I'm currently trying to get verified on there, so I'd love it if you considered me for a future commission. I'm running a lovey-dovey sale throughout February in celebration of Valentine's Day. Any art that is for a loved one or is shippy in nature is eligible for a 10% discount. Just make sure to mention this sale when filling out your commission form. Thank you so much for considering me. I cannot wait to work for you. So, after the deadline to reply back, I made my claim to PayPal. And less than 24 hours later, a miracle happened. The bitch actually messaged me back, and I don't think a summary can really do this message justice. So allow me to perform a dramatic reading of our exchange. Hello, Happy New Year. I hope you've been having a nice holiday. It's been a few weeks since we last spoke, so I wanted to see if there are any updates on my commission. It's been a few days since you last posted anything. Can I get a response back, please? I'd hate to think you're purposefully ghosting or trying to scam me. If I don't hear back from you with an update after a week, I'll have no choice but to contact PayPal support. Please give me an update or a refund for this commission. It's been over a month since you last responded. Hi, I didn't ghost you. Actually, I had a really serious accident. I've been injured, that's why I wasn't able to do anything. I know, I should have informed you. I'll send you the work in a day, I promise. Kindly take the claim back. It's affecting my PayPal. Life is already giving me a very hard time. Please don't do this to me. I'll try and send you an update, please. I'm very sorry to hear about your accident, and I hope you recover quickly. I'll be happy to remove the claim from PayPal after you send me the work if it really will only take a day. I hope you can understand why I would be hesitant to remove it without receiving any work, however, as that would give me no way of resolving this or possibly getting a refund if you are a scammer. It is a little hard to believe that an accident would prevent you from letting me know the status of the work I paid for at any of the four times I messaged you over the past month, but only when I have filed the claim with PayPal can you respond. It would be a very convenient excuse to just get me to remove the claim, since I'm sure you know you cannot reopen a claim once it's been closed. As I said, I will be happy to mark the claim as resolved and the service as received once that has happened. Or, if it would be more convenient for you, you can just issue a refund for the full $80 to resolve the claim that way. Okay, I'll send you the update in a day. Thanks for the reply and I'll show that I'm not a scammer. I appreciate that. I look forward to receiving the finished piece. <laughs> look, it really takes time. I'll send you the first draft, then you should remove. Please remove it on the first draft. And when you'll approve it, I'll send you the final work. You can ask all my clients. I've never delayed anyone's work before, and I won't disappoint you this time. That's my promise to you. How long do you believe it will take you to finish the piece after the first draft? I'll send you the draft today, and if you'll approve it today, I'll send you the final work tomorrow. Then that should be no problem. If you will send me the final work by tomorrow, then I'll release the claim tomorrow. Sure thing! So great! Either she sends me the draft in a day, like she offered to do, or I escalate the issue to PayPal. Because if you don't know, PayPal works disputes by first trying to have the customer and business resolve them on their own. Once the customer marks it as resolved, it cannot be opened again. Thus, her desperate need to have me remove it. A dispute like this places a hold on your PayPal account. In some instances, preventing you from being able to conduct any business until it's resolved. That's most likely why the business name Pixel Provision is so generic. 
brand non-specific? Artsy related enough that it's not suspicious, but easy enough to replace or switch to a different PayPal account if a hold does get placed on it, as I suspect is the case here. A friend of mine fell victim to one of these scammers in the past, and the business he paid to was called Digital Global. The naming convention is very similar in my opinion at the very least. What do you think? I'm thinking, it would probably be easier for this person to just refund me the $80, but if I still get the crappy art out of it, I guess I can live with that. And, uh, well, I sure did get something bad. What this artist sent to me at 2.07 a.m. was this. Not only is this just a flipped and traced picture of an official Activision Blizzard promotional image of Malga, but that's my own fucking art? She traced my own art that I showed as a reference of my character and tried to sell it back to me. I've had some very nutty stuff happen to me in my life as an artist. I've had people try to trick me into drawing foot fetish work. I've had someone take a commission that I made for them and try to claim it as their own work in a fandom space that we shared. And I even had my own experience with Tumblr's discount Wonder Bread guy, Mr. Can you please draw Gudra in a frilly pink tutu and panties? But this? I think this is one of the most insane things anyone has ever done to me concerning my artwork. So I reply with all the disappointment I can muster at 7 a.m. when I've just woken up to do my ranch chores and immediately escalate to PayPal. And I am still waiting on a resolution. PayPal says it'll likely be marked resolved by the 9th, but I have no clue what that means. I gave them all the evidence I have, including the proof that they traced my work and tried to sell it back to me. <sighs> that seems fairly cut and dry in my opinion. I want my monies, man. Or a good picture of me sitting on Malga's shoulder as we ride into battle. <sighs> now, I won't be sharing the account name because even if it is a scam account, I really don't want to send hate towards anybody. And I know that people would go ham in this girlie's DMs, but what's most important is that I know for a fact it's not a singular person running accounts like this. It's like some sort of scam conglomerate. Like I said, the business I paid to is Pixel Provision, and I have a suspicion that multiple of these Twitter VFX bot accounts pay into the same business PayPal. I have my own thoughts that multiple people probably have access to the Twitters themselves, judging by the quick attitude switch up when I wouldn't mark the issue as resolved and fall for the guilt tripping, but so far I don't have much evidence for or against it. It's just my speculation. What I can do is try to tell you how to not fall for these tricks. Welcome to Mark's masterclass on how to avoid getting scammed when commissioning someone for artwork. The biggest one right now is don't go directly through Twitter for a commission. But overall, make sure their social media presence isn't just e-begging or trying to get people to commission them. Scrolling down an artist's account can tell you a lot, especially if they have suspicious text posts and replies like this one on screen. That's bot activity if I've ever seen it. Oh look, verified. Watch out for stolen art, styles that vastly change from picture to picture, and straight up stolen or free assets. It might be harder for you to tell the difference if you're not an artist yourself, but a lot of these scammers have a very distinct style that's known as I traced this and shaded with black. If someone's work goes from hyper-realistic to an anime girl with very bad proportions from post to post, you should probably stay away. Look at their other social medias. I made this mistake of just seeing that they had socials listed without really checking them. After all, I wasn't gonna join this girl's Discord just because I'm paying her to make art for me. But after looking through her link tree more thoroughly, I found that she didn't actually have a Discord linked. All she had was a link that takes any user to their own Discord homepage if you clicked on it. 
Keep an eye out and make sure that one person who's trying to get you to commission them isn't posting the same stolen or shoddily made content as another of these scam accounts. You'll see a lot of crossover on these, which honestly does suggest that they're all one big group doing this together, but it can be fairly easy to tell because a lot of these accounts will have a pinned post that has some piece of poorly made or stolen work and an entirely different account will have that artwork or something else as either their icon or as their own pinned post. Be very wary of stolen pictures being used as icons or selfies. Back in the MySpace days, everyone stole this one guy's pictures and claimed to be him, and myself included as a cringe 12-year-old. The scammer used a social media star's selfies as her icon on Linktree to try and seem more real. Thanks, obsessed Reddit at Simp for having an account dedicated to this girl for helping me figure out what was up. If you're getting unsure vibes from someone online, do a quick Google reverse image search of their icons or artwork to see what comes up. It won't always work, but a lot of the time it does pull up some juicy info. Always pay for commissions as goods and services and never send payments on friends and family. Only use friends and family if you are sending a donation or a gift. Not only is it legally dubious to do, it's unlawful for someone to ask you to do it. Lastly, always be wary of anyone who comes to your DMs asking you to commission them. Many real artists do this, even if it's bad luck, but by this point, it's just safer to not trust anyone who does it. And if they do, always get an actual commission sheet and look up their username to find some of their artworks. If you can't find anything, it's probably safer to just skip them. Hopefully you can be better prepared for scammers now and got a little laugh out of my misery. <laughs> and if you do fall victim to one, you'll hopefully be able to dispute it if you pay the right way. As you can see here, I ended up making the Malga art myself because obviously no one else is gonna do it. Uh, tedious. But you know, I'm still happy with it. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. I truly appreciate it, and I also truly appreciate my wonderful Patreon supporters. At our brother-sister-sibling tier, we have Viri, Miss Mercuriel, and Minnow VTuber. At our Mommy's Daddies and Guardians tier, we have Isabel Marks, Mary, and Kiryu. And at our Gods, Goddesses, and Deities tier, we have Gods and Punks. Also, as a reminder, we do have channel memberships. You get to see videos a few days early, and you get some other exclusive perks seen here on screen. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe, it really helps out the channel a lot, and I appreciate you. We'll be having a Q&A video at 2,000 subs, so that's something to look forward to. And I hope you have a scrab dangulous day. Bye-bye. I saw that they actually- I'm getting a telemarketer call. Die. Fucking telemarketer won't leave me alone. I'm gonna throttle someone.